Hi, um, I'm Darren from Elephant's Trunks Restoration here in Essex um, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to flatten out a, a brushed lacquer finish um, using a pullover solution um, to make it look like it's it's hand finished. Um, you can use it obviously if it's been sprayed too but um, we've finished it using a, um, a traditional polishing mop here and um, much better than a, a standard brush they um, they flow better uh, it regulates that much better um, and uh, what we've used is a, a, a satin bar top lacquer uh, so it's good heat resistancy good water resistancy um, much better for use in a standard family life and with that we use a, a brushing cellulose thinner um, so it helps to prolong the drying time of the lacquer so it's much more workable um, and uh, that's been done um, we'll talk about that in a bit but this is a um, pullover rubber um, and what it is is basically a, a bit of cotton wadding inside uh, an old bit of denim from some old jeans that we had um, and it just provides a nice flat surface um, that we can get all the ridges and lumps and bumps out um, and we use that to go backwards and forwards over the table with the pullover solution um, so yeah so the table has been finished not going to talk about how we finished it today but perhaps that's something we can come back to another time um, so yeah hope you enjoy okay so this is our table uh, it's a modern dining table uh, it's basically um, chipboard underneath the laminate, laminate um, walnut. Um, so what we've done is we stripped it right back because the original finish was compromised um, and we've stained it and we used two coats of sanding sealer um, and then uh, it's a de-wax solution and then we've had two coats of the bar top lacquer brushed on top of this. So you can see, hopefully, from this, that it's a little bit streaky, a little bit patchy. Um, and what we're going to do with our pullover solution is try and make that flat and basically a, a nice um, shine all the way across. Now what we've used is a satin finish. So on here... Um, you can see parts of the grain. It's not too important to get all the grain completely filled when you use a satin finish. Um, you're not looking for a super high gloss mirrored finish that you would um, if you wanted that. So satin's a kind of just a nice sort of sheen rather than a, a high gloss finish. Okay, so we've got our rubber, we're going to dip it up with our pullover solution. Um, unlike when you're doing a French polish, you add the solution directly to the cotton wadding inside. With this one, you could just dip it into a bowl of your pullover solution, squeeze it out, and then, like when you're French polishing, what we use for French polishing is of linseed oil or mineral oil as a lubricant um, so that your polishing rubber doesn't stick. What we use here is to just spray the table with some water and then we're just going to start off with circles, see if we can blend in the edges. Um, and like when you're refinishing most things, they say if you look after the edges, the rest will look after itself. Um, because it's really difficult not to end up with brush marks on your edges and drips on the side. You have to be super careful when you're applying it. And we get all the walks of go over the table a couple of times using fairly big circles here, not using the most amount of pressure. Um, so you just but don't stop, just keep going. If you stop, you're likely to stick and then you're gonna cause yourself problems. I wanted um, to do this video because when I first started doing this, um, this is not something you can really 
unless you unless you start off life in a polishing shop or um, with a, a company that makes and finishes furniture like this, it's not something you tend to learn how to do. So I was trying to come up with different ways of finishing furniture. Um, obviously modern furniture, we'd use this on an antique, but um, I found it very difficult. There was nothing, there was a few chat rooms online, people suggesting different things. Um, and the use of pullover came up, so I looked into it, how was the best way to use it. When I first started, instead of having the, um, the denim rag, I first started using a, um, a leather chamois cloth, but it didn't work out so well. Not quite as, as flat, not quite as hard, and would leave sort of little marks in the finish. So I decided to go for a, use something a bit different. Um, and the, the denim seems to seems to work well. Um, it was something that I had read about. So like with most things when you're doing this sort of work. It's all about experience. It's all about um, experimentation, trying things, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. Um, and then going from there, seek advice, talk to people, read, I've read so many books. I mean, you can look on, on YouTube and find a million different videos on how to French polish and pretty much everyone is going to be different. Uh, people find their own way to do things, what works for them, whether it's because they're using a different type of polish, whether it's because they're using linseed oil or rather than mineral oil, whether it's because they're slightly heavy handed. Um, certain things will work differently for certain people. You get taught the right way to do something, the traditional way, but you only get taught the way that that person who's teaching you knows how to do it, or has always done it for themselves. So you have to work out a way which works best for you. So we've gone from circles to figure of eights. We keep the pressure constant. Um, but I guess the biggest mistake that people make at this point is that they don't keep the pressure constant. When you sweep round, the, your pressure isn't the same on the upstroke and the downstroke. So you have to be very careful with that. We're not talking massive amounts of pressure here at the moment, but as the water evaporates, as the pullover solution becomes less in your rubber, you start to apply a little bit more pressure than you did to start with. You can feel it, it's a bit of a drag on your rubber. And then you're still doing a figure of eights, but long strokes across the table with the grain, always with the grain, whatever you're doing, always with the grain. And then slowly, you, the, you'll see the surface even out. Like I said, with this is a satin finish, so it's not going to be, you're not going to have all the pores filled, the grain doesn't have to be filled, and um, that's not the sort of, you need that specifically when you're doing a high gloss finish, whether it's with French polish or any type of lacquer. Then once this is done, the rest did it hardened up. If you wanted to, you could just finish it with a bit of wax polish. It always makes it look a little bit more natural. And the bar top lacquer is great because it, like I said before, it's, uh, it's good water resistancy, it's good heat resistancy, and um, basically much better for a family life. The French polish finish is brilliant. 
Uh, but it's not the most durable things. So tend to find um, tend to use it more just for fine furniture, antique furniture, um, stuff that what you want to look great but isn't going to get the most amount of use. So this, this rubber here is starting to drag a little bit now. You can the, feel the pressure as you pull it across. So with that, the pressure I apply is increasing a bit more. Still figure of eights, just. We're still making sure we're getting those edges so that they stay flat. And then you see the, the sheen, the satin sheen starts to even out. And strokes, when you apply more pressure, sort of become a little bit slower. Now you can dip up again, do the whole process again if you wanted to. Um, depends how even you got the finish in the first place when you apply it. Um, and this is applied with a polishing mop with a bar top lac and a brushing cellulose thinner. You know, the, the thinner basically um, helps you, slows down the rate in which it dries so that it's easier to brush on. It still dries pretty quickly. You know, have to be quite rapid when you're doing it. You can sort of um, thin it down pretty much, almost up to 40% thinners depending on the sort of surface area that you, you, you're trying to do. So we're getting there now. And now we're switched to straight strokes, again with the grain, backwards and forwards across the table. It's a fairly simple process. A lot of this is about, um, it's not necessarily about the products you use, it's more about, I mean obviously you have to use a pullover solution but there are lots of different companies out there that do it. Um, I use Jenkins, they're probably the most local to me I think. Um, they're based in North London. Um, but there are a lot, you know, Mylands, Fiddies, lots of different companies out there that do this sort of thing. You can get them online. And what you need to try to avoid at this point is catching the sides. If you catch the sides with your rubber, you could end up with an unsightly trickle down the, down the edge, which is not what we want. I'm just going to check this. Okay. I think, I think we're pretty much there now. So what you, uh, and, I'll, and I'll bring the camera around and show you guys that what we're, you might see some streaks on it, but what basically it was that, that will, they will disappear as the solution evaporates and the table hardens up. Um, what you do need to be careful of is overworking it because then it can soften too much and it will start to drag and pull and then you're stuffed and you'll probably have to take it all off and start all over again. Now this is mainly, um, it is not necessarily down to the product that you're using, a lot of this is based on your technique. You want to catch the edges, it's the, the pressure that you apply, um, knowing when to stop. And that doesn't come, you won't be able to do that straight away. It comes with, with practice um, and getting to know what you're doing, basically. So, um, so we've, I should mention we've got, got our nitrile gloves on now because the solution won't eat through these nitrile gloves. It would if they were rubber, so. 
Yeah, let me bring the camera around and I'll see if you can I can show you now. So the surface is flat and it's even. The depth of shine is the same all the way across the table. Um, I think hopefully you can, it comes out well enough. And there we go. So I've got the edges to do now. I've got the the extension leaf there to do. Um, and then we'll be able to get it back to the customer. Okay, so that's our little uh, video on how to use a pullover solution for a lacquered, uh, we, we use bar top lacquer, you can use any kind of lacquer um, to, to flatten that all out. Um, don't forget, you can look us up, uh, Elephant's Trunks Restoration, and um, if you've got any questions, send them over, and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.